this job. <laughs> when you're self-employed, uh, you just kind of take the job. Um, it was something that I had a, a lot of interest in. I always found the photographic medium to be, I just have a love and a passion for it in all of its various phases. And so uh, I, I took it from the standpoint of I wanted to do what I wanted to do in life. And uh, so I have. The harsh photo that I needed to fix. I've had several of those. You're talking about photo restoration work, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the lady recently passed away, her name was Alma Davis, and she brought me an image. I used it on the other side of that poster over there. But the photograph was really badly faded and a lot of other issues too. It's a very old photograph. And she was really kind of ill when she got it from her sister to mail it to her because she thought it was too far gone to do anything with. It took me about a day and a half to restore it, but I got it restored. And she was very grateful and we made an extra copy to send to Wisconsin. I forget the exact area in Wisconsin she was going to mail it to. But the museum there uh, wanted a copy of it because it was one of the first homesteads in that area. So a lot of satisfaction in being able to take something that's almost disappeared. It's almost like bringing something that's near extinction back to life uh, from that way of looking at it because now it's preserved. It's there for everybody to see, enjoy. I do photography because I really enjoy the medium and also like storytelling. And one of the things that photography does, I think, very well, if it's done well, is tell a story. And you can read a lot of emotion into either a movie or you can read into a still photograph, as an example of this one here. And this is one of my favorite photos that I recently found. It was an old newspaper article. But this man found out that it was the last day of the circus where he was performing. And he was, I think they had a lot of emotion in the picture. So that's one of the reasons, just one of many, but one of the reasons why I really got into photography was uh, the storytelling aspect of it. What made you want to start this store? Um, the older I got, I realized if I did not start this shop, I never would, and I always wanted to have my own shop because I wanted to do things my way. And um, Don, who you talked to earlier, had foot the photograph place, and he had space here. He was like willing to let me use, and I'm like, cool. So I moved in here um, and just started, and that way I can control the materials that I'm using when I'm restoring book because I like using really high quality because um, that's going to make your book last the longest. And then adding the art supplies, um, I use them in my work all the time. So it just made sense to start carrying them because I don't have time to run out and find them. So this way they're coming in-house and it brings other people into my book bindery that wouldn't normally come in. So, and I get to have fun. I got to decorate how I wanted. I've always loved Alice in Wonderland, so that's how I decorated. And Ted, the building owner, he was happy with anything I did, even gluing crystals to the wall. So I just, it's a fun, happy place, and this is what I was looking for. One of the worst books, other than a dog chewed one, was one that someone had in the trunk of their car, and water got in there, so it was water damaged. Um, and it basically fell apart because all of that glue that the books put together with got soft and it fell apart. The hardest part was getting the pages separated and then flattening them again so that it was a relatively flat, flat book, which couldn't get all the way flat, but um, it looked a lot better than it did when it came in. It was a Bible. The leather just okay. totally got saturated and stretched out and warped. So it got a new leather cover and pages were fixed and pretty. And they're still using that Bible. I like book binding because I like using my hands and I really, really enjoy books. And that's probably it. I like seeing a book being able to be back to what it was originally. How did I end up owning the building? Well, um, in 1976, when I was working at Lynn Benton Community College half time, I was also a night manager of a restaurant just a block from here called the Big O. And the fellow who started this Old World Center com complex idea of, of having a little renaissance, cute, whimsical shopping center, Mr. Kent Byes, who 
owns the Troubadour shop just down the street here, approached me about opening the restaurant. And I followed up on his suggestion and opened the Old World Deli 42 years ago. Okay. I've been here, uh, working here since 1977. That's when they opened the restaurant, that's 42 years. And uh, in 1986, I bought the building. And then in 1992, I built my home in the upper floors of this building. I've been here all that time and done those three main things. You know, I've been here, uh, working here since 1977. That's when I opened the restaurant, that's 42 years. And uh, in 1986, I bought the building. And then in 1992, I built my home in the upper floors of this building. I've been here all that time and done those three main things. What were some of the worst books that you've had to fix? One of the worst books, other than a dog chewed one, was one that someone had in the trunk of their car and water got in there, so it was water damaged. Um, and it basically fell apart because all of that glue that the books put together with got soft and it fell apart. The hardest part was getting the pages separated and then flattening them again so that it was a relatively flat, flat book, which couldn't get all the way flat, but um, it looked a lot better than it did when it came in. It was a Bible. Leather it's just okay. totally it's got okay. saturated and stretched out and warped. Okay, so it got a new leather cover and pages were fixed and pretty. And they're still using that Bible. Oh no, that I needed to fix. I've had several of those. You're talking about photo restoration work, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I guess when a lady recently passed away, her name was Alma Davis, and she brought me an image. I used it on the other side of that poster over there. But the photograph was really badly faded and a lot of other issues too. It was a very old photograph. And she was really kind of ill when she got it from her sister to mail it to her because she thought it was too far gone to do anything with. It took me about a day and a half to restore it, but I got it restored. And she was very grateful and we made an extra copy to send to Wisconsin. I forget the exact area in Wisconsin she was going to mail it to. But the museum there uh, wanted a copy of it because it was one of the first homesteads in that area. So a lot of satisfaction in being able to take something that's almost disappeared. It's almost like bringing something that's near extinction back to life because now it's preserved. It's there for everybody to see, enjoy. That was hard. That one was tough, but we were able to pull it off. thinking about these reds, oranges, and yellows when you asked for the mural? Well, when the mural was first built, or first done, I just uh, told the uh, mural artist to be creative and to paint something creative. Uh, prior to that, the same artist did the black and white historical mural that's on the other building there. So that was actually two different murals. But this, that one, I gave very specific information how to do. This, well, as far as the theme, this uh, one behind me was some of my input, but mostly artists, just as you'll find from Carol Selberg when you interview her later, the work she did on the ceiling of the Old World Center. Okay. I started fixing books as a kid because there was five of us in our family and we were a little hard on books. So my mom made us go to the library, check out a book that showed us how to fix things. That was the start. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, but that's how I started. And so I've always just kind of fixed things. When I was done with art school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I worked at a bunch of different jobs and one of them was in a bindery. 
and I found I really liked working on books and that's how it started. <coughs> Is your favorite picture you have sold? Probably the last one, which is uh, mostly the eclipse pictures. I've uh, had a lot of photography over many years, but this past August when we had the total solar eclipse, it was just so magnificent and so wonderful and so universally appreciated that I'd say that would probably be my favorite. Okay. How did you become a photographer and why? I was in the corporate world and uh, was doing pretty good, but I had a uh, love for photography and loved the medium and I loved the idea of being independent. And so, uh, and all that goes with that, uh, it's more work, longer hours, but uh, you're calling your own shots and you're doing something that you really have a passion and a love for. And I think that's important for anybody if they can pull it off. What is your favorite picture you have sold? Probably the last one, which is uh, mostly the eclipse pictures. This past August when we had the total solar eclipse, it was just so magnificent and so wonderful and so universally appreciated that I'd say that would probably be my favorite. So tell me about this camera. About this particular camera, well see, if you look in this side, you're looking in the wrong side because actually you have to look in this side because this is the front of the camera. And this was where you would look down either through the top, there, or here if you want to look at horizontal shots. The film came across the back here. And so actually when, when you click the shutter here, you just have one shutter speed, then that exposed it. The lens opens up, the diaphragm opens up, the film is exposed and it closes back down. And unlike your digital cameras where you get instant feedback by looking at the back and, and saying, wow, that's wonderful. You have to wait till you get the film by to get it processed. You either have to send the film yes. out to get it processed or bring it to yourself. Yes, okay. So actually, uh, what you're doing is you're looking up here. This is actually where the little red window, you had to advance it to the next frame. Once you shot one frame of film, then the film had to move out of there and put another piece of film in its place. And so rather than looking at it like that, you're actually holding down about waist level, and now you can see like that. See? Wow. I can show you that same principle if you want to hold me, hand me this other one back here that's like a flex. That one probably dates probably back to uh, probably back to the 1920s or so. So almost a century old. And this one here is the same principle. You're looking through this lens, but you're actually the picture's being taken through this lens, and that's why they call it a twin lens reflex. And the well, it's the top lens. For mm, the top lens is that you're looking through. And that's the one that forms the image. But this is actually the taking. So when you look down through the top, the image you see in there is going to be reversed. And the image comes in through here, through the, through the viewing lens, and comes off a mirror and up into the ground glass where you focus. Okay? So it's a little different. That's a magnifier so that you can find focus uh, and make sure you get it precisely in focus. Okay? And you can still take pictures with that camera. That camera was made in 1935, but you can still get film for that camera. It's called 120 film. And it's even colored. You can shoot color or black and white for the You betcha. So. How long have you had this business? About this long. <laughs> no. uh, actually, let's see. I actually, I've been in the business for about 35 years. I started out, I did all kinds of photography uh, over the National Science Center, uh, different news organizations, some photojournalistic work, but mostly studio work. And a lot of it was back in Georgia. I spent a lot of time in the dark room doing custom printing for people. Uh, moved out here 21 years ago, opened up a studio. Uh, today, uh, rather than shooting events, I mostly do photo restoration work for people. I really love the history of a lot of that and custom printing and art copy for artists. The worst book I've ever worked on was one that a dog chewed. This woman um, rescued greyhounds and her husband had a book collection 
and her the greyhound got a hold of one of his books and um, trashed it. <laughs> so I had to um, basically rebuild part of the cover, which was done in silk. So trying to match this and make it look like nothing ever happened to this book so her husband didn't go ballistic um, it was quite fun. But I have a friend in the interior design business and she was able to locate a matching silk for me. Cool. So that took care of the outside. The inside was also a um, hand silk and paper. So I had to find that to match that. But all's well that ends well. Dog's still living and couple's still happy. What's my favorite thing to cook? Well, I like to cook at the Old World Deli every day. And the things that here. Mr. Mailman, this is Joe, our mailman. <laughs> What's your most favorite food at the I, um, But I, you know, I like a, a really good uh, sandwich. So I'd probably go with, uh, with uh, I like the roast beef, roast okay. beef sandwich. Yay. Give us a hand here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What's your favorite thing to cook? What's my favorite thing to cook? Well, I like to cook a chili from scratch and cook brownies and uh, only make the roast beef sandwich if it's ordered. Well, Evan, this building is almost 110 years old and there were at least four previous owners. At two times, there were groups of people, like from 1910, 11 till the 1950s, it was one group, and then another man owned it during the 50s and 60s, and then another person who, was, Ted Weinstein, was an owner. They came down here and worked in the 60s and 70s. And then uh, another group with Mr. White, Hugh White, who is a business owner here in town, owned it with a group called Truax, and I bought it in 1986. <laughs> the most messed up book you have ever fixed? The worst book I've ever worked on was one that a dog chewed. Her husband had a book collection and her the Greyhound got a hold of one of his books and um, trashed it. <laughs> so I had to um, basically rebuild part of the cover which was done in silk. So trying to match this and make it look like nothing ever happened to this book so her husband didn't go ballistic. Um, it was quite fun. But I have a friend in the interior design business and she was able to locate a matching silk for me. Cool. So that took care of the outside. The inside was also a um, hand silk end paper. So I had to find that. I started fixing books as a kid. Um, because there was five of us in our family and we were a little hard on books. So my mom made us go to the library, check out a book that showed us how to fix things. And that was the start. But that's how I started. And so I've always just kind of fixed things. When I was done with art school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I worked at a bunch of different jobs and one of them was in a bindery. And I found I really liked working on books and How did you end up owning the building? How did I end up owning the building? Well, Alex, um, in 1976, when I was working at Lynn Benton Community College half time, I was also a night manager of a restaurant just a block from here called the Big O. And the fellow who started this 
old world center com complex idea of, of having a little renaissance, cute, whimsical shopping center, Mr. Kent Buys, who owns the Troubadour shop just down the street here, approached me about opening the restaurant. And I followed up on his suggestion and opened the Old World Deli 42 years ago. Are you in any of the pictures on the walls? Oh, Maya, that's a great question. You know, Carol Selber made it, painted all the murals, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say I'm up there at least three times. One of them hidden behind the curtains there, and two times up here. One with my mother, with my mother-in-law, and another one uh, with me waiting on a customer, and the other one is me crushing some grapes out in a grape vineyard. You know, I've been here, uh, working here since 1977. That's when I opened the restaurant. That's 42 years. And uh, in 1986, I bought the building. What's my favorite part about owning this building? You know, it is a lifestyle. About 20 years ago, I built my home on the upper floor of this building. And so I'm here, I live here, and I work here, and all of the customers, even like meeting you, I wouldn't have been able to meet you if I hadn't had this place. So I'd have to say uh, it's the interaction socially that makes it really worthwhile. What was the hardest photo that you needed to fix? The hardest photo that I needed to fix? I've had several of those. You're talking about photo restoration work, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I guess when a lady recently passed away, her name was Alma Davis, and she brought me an image, but the photograph was really badly faded and she thought it was too far gone to do anything with. It took me about a day and a half to restore it, but I got it restored. So a lot of satisfaction in being able to take something that's almost disappeared. It's almost like bringing something that's near extinction back to life, uh, from that way of looking at it, because now it's preserved. It's there for everybody to see, enjoy. So. That was hard. That one was tough, but we were able to pull it off. How did you get this job? <laughs> when you're self-employed, uh, you just kind of take the job. Um, it was something that I had a, a lot of interest in. I always found the photographic medium to be, I just have a love and a passion for it in all of its various phases. And so uh, I, I took it from the standpoint of I wanted to do what I wanted to do in life. And uh, so I have. Can you ask any more questions? I do photography because I really enjoy the medium and also like storytelling. And one of the things that photography does, I think, really well, if it's done well, is tell a story. And you can read a lot of emotion into either a movie or you can read into a still photograph. This man found out that it was the last day of the circus where he was performing and he was the elephant caretaker. And so it's their last day to go. So I think they had a lot of emotion in the picture. So that's one of the reasons, just one of many, but one of the reasons why I really got into photography was uh, the storytelling aspect of it. I like book binding because I like using my hands and I really, really enjoy books. I like seeing a book being able to be back to what it was originally. The older I got, I realized if I did not start this shop, I never would. And I always wanted to have my own shop because I wanted to do things my way. And um, Don, who you talked to earlier, had put the photograph place and he had space here he was like willing to let me use and I'm like cool so I moved in here um, and just started and that way I can control the materials that I'm using when I'm restoring book because I like using really high quality because um, that's going to make your book last the longest and then adding the art supplies um, I use them in my work all the time so it just made sense to start carrying them because I don't have time to run out and find them so this way they're coming in house and it brings other people into my book bindery that wouldn't normally come in. So, and I get to have fun. I got to decorate how I wanted. I've always loved Alice in Wonderland, so that's how I decorated. And Ted, the building owner, he was happy with anything I did, even gluing crystals to the wall. So I just 
it's a fun, happy place, and this is what I was looking for. One of the worst books, other than a dog chew one, was one that someone had in the trunk of their car, and water got in there, so it was water damaged. Um, and it basically fell apart because all of that glue that the books put together with got soft and it fell apart. The hardest part was getting the pages separated and then flattening them again. The leather just totally got saturated and stretched out and warped. So got a new leather cover and pages were fixed and pretty. And they're still using that binder.